yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Siso here, bringing us yet another logo design tour today, bringing you guys a logo design tour to help you guys in like the same, I know a lot of you guys have the same problem, it's how to create a letter concept that is a lot harder, quotations, than other letters in the alphabet. So when I think the hardest letter for me, or at least I, I get the majority, the majority of people always say to yourselves, how do you make a letter concept for something like uh, the, the simplest letters in the alphabet, the simplest, you know, shaped letters in the alphabet, like, uh, for example, L's, uh, the Y's, the S's, and the H's. So basically the letters that you can't really do much with because you're going to change the shape so much that I won't actually look at the letter or maybe you you kind of want to change the shape but it's so hard to make it original because you know you really focus a lot on making sure that the actual letter is the most original part of the logo so basically my answer to that is kind of using shapes line uh you know lining to actually kind of you know manipulate the letter concept but not really manipulate the actual letter if that makes any sense as you can see here okay let me just hit my examples really quick so in my examples this is a this is a y right so as you can see this is this is a y for sure you can see that 100 percent so if i look at this you can say to yourself this is a pretty basic Y on the inside of this, you know, crazy fun little Y concept logo. So the way I did it was I kind of just figured myself out and kind of like, you know, kind of use, of course, outlines and circles and, you know, rectangles to give myself a more original logo concept look. So at, when I look at this, I think, you know, it's it's a really dope logo for, for letter Y. But the craziest thing is I didn't really use or really manipulate the actual Y in the actual logo. So maybe that is your answer, guys. If you're struggling with actually using a or making or creating a letter concept for yourself or for clients that are like more harder letters for you to do, maybe you should try to focus on what you can do on the outside rather than always focusing on the actual letter itself. Now, okay, that kind of gives me my segue into the actual tutorial because I kind of want to explain what I meant. So if you guys are wondering, yes, I do have logos or excuse me, sketches for my logos that I had here. Really quick, this entire page took me 15 minutes, just really quick little sketches. So of course, this is my Y concept that's right here. Actually, it's a lot better than my actual sketch. So, you know, applause for me. Um, The actual L concept, the same exact idea lies right here. This is an S concept that I had over here. Um, and this is the H concept right here. So what I want to do for you guys is actually show you guys the actual way I created my Y concept and my H concept. That way you guys can get the same exact or at least use or, uh, you know, manipulate your shapes and your logos and your letters the same way, the same techniques that I use. That way it can help you guys uh, along your, you know, your row, your hard journey into logo design. So, uh, yeah. So let's get this thing in. Let's get started. Let's just get started, okay? Whew. Okay. So, basically, if you guys do not know, uh, the way I like to start is using a shape, right? So, I like to use a rectangle, and I like to use a rectangle tool to make my little rectangle on the outside of the actual canvas. That way, I can just kind of manipulate, or excuse me, duplicate my little shape here, and then bring it into my main canvas, and then, you know, keep, you know, making sure that I can use the same exact shape. Because I don't want to, you know, make this shape right, and I want to keep, like, how do you say? I don't want to keep trying to make a new rectangle to try to keep the same exact, or like, you know, do like this. Like, you know, like, oh, I want to make sure it's the same exact width and whatnot. That's what this is over here for. So you don't have to actually worry about creating a, uh, or, you know, taking your time to like kind of making sure that it's the same exact width. Just use the same exact shape over and over again. It's the easiest thing to do for you guys. So also really quickly, if you guys do not know, of course, this is the fill. This is the actual stroke path. So if I'm just going to change this to like pink or something like that, you can see that the actual fill fills the shape in and you can always turn them off by just clicking on this none here. It turns it off for you guys. Same thing for the stroke. It turns it off if you want to. And of course, to actually make the stroke bigger, you have your stroke uh, table right here, which I believe is in Windows Stroke if you don't have this up already. And of course, you can just put it up here and you can see now the stroke is going up. And if you don't want the stroke anymore, you take it off. Simple kind of stuff here. And you'll I'll show you guys also more with the shape we'll do too and stuff like that. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing started. So, okay. All right. So I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make that same exact Y that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with this. I'm gonna duplicate this one over here again. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of make sure I rotate this thing. Is that good? I'm, I say a little bit more, just a little bit more. And this way, I'm gonna actually just uh, hold Alt, select the actual uh, shape right here. That way it selects all the different points and I can just select one point and move it over to where I want over here because I want it to be locked. You can feel a little snap right here. That way it says these two points are on the exact same point here. And that way you know it's exactly perfect the way you want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag Alt over here, duplicate this shape again, uh, transform and reflect and okay. And right now, of course, I'm making the letter Y. So I'm gonna try to make the standard letter Y. And really quickly, if you guys wanna, you know, if, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try, I wanna make sure I line this shape up with this point over here. So I'm gonna just click on this shape, go to my opacity, turn down the opacity for now. 
then I can go back to the shape and be like, you know, where is the point that I want it on? Boom, it's right there. Now I know that these two things are symmetrical and it's also both on the same exact, you know, uh, orientation or the same exact point on opposite sides. So I can click back here, make it back to 100, and now I have this. Now, to get the same exact, let me get the actual sketch out so I know what the heck I was doing. All right, so let's say we want to get this little this little extent. So I have basically the Y here and then like a little extension going outwards a little bit. So that's what I'm doing really quickly. I'll make a nice little horizontal line and we're going to go ahead and line this just right here or so. Is that pretty good? I think that's okay. I mean, I might even just do it like this. I can do that, right? So I'm just gonna put a line through everything. I'm gonna select, I can select multiple shapes on an in, uh, illustrator, in illustrator if I just hold shift, just like so. And if I hold shift tab, this is the shape of the tool that I used before my other previous logo design tutorials. And basically, if you guys can see already, uh, you see this little mouse that has a little uh, minus button on it. If I hold alt, it actually changes the plus button to a minus, or excuse me, it was a plus button, and if I hold Alt, it changes to a minus button. So what you guys can see is different uh, kind of selections of the actual letters or the actual shapes that you selected. So basically, you can see like this is an actual shape if you you know you, these these lines cross uh, paths. So basically, I can hold Alt while this is meaning this is the minus section, and I can just basically delete it just like so. Now, what the, what if you, if you clicked on an actual shape and while it was a plus, if you just click on it. You can see it if I just tab out really quickly or just excuse me, press A and click on the outside. So that way, you know, I'm, all my sections are gone. I can click here. Now it's basically one shape that I actually had when I was in my shape builder tool and I, when I can see all these different shapes, right? So that way, if you want to do it that way and then press delete on your keyboard, you can also do it like that. So basically now I can just go ahead and select these and just move them in however further or far I want. And I believe for my exact uh, example here, I kind of had one longer on this side and one shorter on this side. So that's what pretty much what I'm going to do exactly the same. Um, so what I can do is I can take this here, just like bring them in a little bit. I know they're not exactly the same, but it's going to change it a little bit anyway. So I'm not going to really worry about it too much. And I'm just going to go ahead and take these two points, move them in a little bit and move this out a little bit. Now, maybe this is where you're saying, okay, this is my Y concept. It doesn't look as cool and realistically obviously it does not not so much not at all um so you can say to yourself okay at this point what i want to do like how do i actually make it look more original and this is what i was talking about not always focusing on making your actual letter concept look like you know the only thing about the y the, the only thing about the y letter concept so what i'm going to do or local concept excuse me so i'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of this again i'm going to shrink this down a little bit something a little more skinnier than the actual main kind of stroke that you got going on so I'm gonna go ahead and hold alt shift it over here and I'm gonna go ahead and design like an outside almost like an outside little uh, accents to the actual letter design so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like you know freehand a little bit have a little fun with it now of course I already have a general direction I want to go to it's the base of the same exact uh, letter concept that I had before that I showed you guys in the example but this is pretty much what I first started doing this I was just like I was just making the outline of the actual Y so that's what I'm gonna do right now. It's kind of the same exact thought process still. And I'm also trying to keep the same exact spacing here. I can check spacing in the later on. I'll, sh I'll show you guys how to check the spacing just in case it's not perfect. You can fix it really pretty, pretty easily. And I'm gonna go ahead and come to here. And I'm gonna say, all right, at this moment in time when I had my actual uh, example here, I said to myself, I wanna do something a little more cool than just making another line here. Now, what I ended up doing was of course doing like a little like a rounded shape here which looks actually pretty cool. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that really quickly by using the actual ellipse, uh, ellipse tool. So basically it's of course the circle of the actual rectangle thing here. So uh, yeah, if I just get rid of this really quickly, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do this part right here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first off start off with the actual little ellipse here. So I wanna get the same exact kind of uh, angle I had. So I'm gonna turn on my fill, put on my stroke, Put my stroke up. If you hold shift, it goes up by 10 points. And I'm going to make sure my line stroke is in the inside here. I'm going to figure out kind of how I want it. I'll bring this in for now. And I'm going to say to myself, that looks pretty good. Now, to check your width, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little rectangle, or excuse me, my circle here. I'm going to kind of go near this outside edge of this other rectangle that was my original stroke size and this needs to move over one pixel just like so and i'd basically test or actually kind of measure out the stroke this is probably an easier way what i like to do is kind of put them together and then just simply move my stroke up until you can't see or until you see 
that this is no longer intercepted with this. So that way you know that this ellipse is the same exact width uh, or thickness of the actual stroke that's going around the actual Y concept. That way you don't really fall victim into getting really, really oddly displaced, you know, actual shapes. So that's what I want to have here. Looks pretty cool. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is to actually create your shape. Because if you try to do the shape builder tool right now, right? If you try to say, I want to delete this from this, you guys could do that. However, if you ever wanted to actually make a shape going down, like, oh, you can't see it anymore. Like this, though, making shape going down. You have to make sure that your ellipse tool that you're using is um, actually uh, kind of like, in a way, rasterized, if that makes any sense. If you're, like, really a fan of Photoshop. If not, you just want to make that your, make sure your shape is no longer a stroke. And you want to make sure your shape is a fill. So you can actually t uh, change a stroke path here into an actual fill, which I mean by changing this right here into a fill path that will actually make it so that you can actually probably, you know, see it like this, right? So it's a solid shape and not just a stroke. So, because if you try to do this and you kind of want to delete the circle here, you're not going to be able to do that because it's no longer, it's not an actual shape. It's a complete actual just stroke actual shape. I don't know why I said actual twice, but I just did. So I'm going to continue going on with it. So I actually change this stroke into a shape. All you have to do is go to object, expand appearance right here. And that way I'm going to shift click and make sure I select two little, uh, excuse me, two shapes here. Alt to actually delete, just like so. I'm going to delete all this. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take this, kind of do this right here. And I'm going to shift on this. And I'm going to delete and delete. And I'll bring this up a little bit. And now I have something like this. Now, the pretty cool part is if you want to say to yourself, I want to make sure that this is completely perfect or kind of aligned uh, the way you would kind of want it. Right now, you can see this is a curve. This is a straight line. Just really quickly, if you find that shape, which is right here, for me, it's right here. So you can see it always in your group. So if you go to your groups, whatever shape is selected is what's the one that's gonna actually be uh, targeted. So if I click here, this is the shape that's targeted. So this is the shape that I wanna actually lock, or not right now, I'm gonna duplicate it really quickly by either just going to here, dragging into this little shape, or excuse me, into this little new page, drag it there, drop it. As you see, it turns into a new layer. That's just an alternative between just doing alt and dragging, just so you know. And I'm gonna lock the original layer. And on this new copied layer, I'm gonna turn off my fill, turn on my stroke, go to my stroke uh, width here, change my align stroke to the outside, just like so. And I'm gonna just select and pull this up that way all the way until it gets to my the shape that I'm trying to cut out right here. So I'm gonna say, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the same exact technique that I did to actually turn, uh, change uh, the actual original ellipse to an actual fill. So I'm gonna do the same thing, object, expand appearance, and as you can see, this is actually one shape now and not just an actual pa uh, path or excuse me, a stroke. That way I can select this actual shape here, control or shift M, bring up the sh uh, shift marquee, excuse me, shape builder tool, hold alt select on the outside right there. That way, now if I go to this and you can see this, this is actually perfectly aligned with the outside curve that's over here. And that's how you can kind of keep, the, keep the, the real nice just look to it, right? So there we go. That looks pretty dang good. Pretty much a similar, uh, same exact thing I have going on in the actual example here, right? You can say that it's kind of the same exact thing, but actually, actually I put mine together. I don't mind putting it together again. Let's do that. Just pretty much take my two points here, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, three points, drag them on over. And there we go. It's together now. So yes, that's what I did for that. And now pretty much what I want to do really quickly is kind of give that little cut that I had before as well. I use the pen tool here kind of cut it just like so just make a simple little triangle just want to cut it just right down this middle right here just like so so shift m shape little tool minus minus delete there we go now we got a nice little you know cut down going here now last but not least i use the other circle i use another circle that's l for my keyboard for the shortcut for the ellipse tool and i'm just going to throw this circle i believe i had it something like this right let's see uh, yeah, pretty much on the outside. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do for this, of course, is turn off my fill, put on my stroke, go to the inner and bring it up. And I would say this is pretty, I don't kind of want to have this. Uh, what if we put on the outside? Okay, the outside's 10 times better. Okay, that'll work. All right, so what I'm going to do right now, right now is, I'm going to, of course, change my actual stroke into actual fill. So expand appearance. Now it's an actual fill. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click on all these shapes here. That way I have some of the shape builder tool. I got to unlock this layer. Boom. 
and pretty much what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, as you remember before, I said if you hold Alt, it turns into a minus button. That's how you delete it. But I also said if you press uh, what's while the actual mouse cursor has a plus on it, it'll actually make your your one solid shape into two different types of shapes or two different shapes. So if I click, this will actually create another shape for me to actually use and manipulate. So that's what I want to do for that. But for the outsides here, I want to make sure I cut the shape out on the insides of here because I don't want it to you know bleed through like that. I don't want that here. And then for the rest of the outside, I want to make one shape just like so. Now I have two different shapes just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this shape a little bit bigger. Right? And I'm going to make this shape a little smaller. That way you get something like this. Right? So it's pretty much the same exact cost that I had before. Now, as you can see, I believe this is not rounded with this right here. So all you have to do is use the same exact techniques as before. So find that shape, which is right here. Click it make a duplicate of it all by the way another alternative besides dragging to the plus button is holding alt and bringing it right above the actual layer so this is the actual duplicate of this layer right here so i'm gonna lock this layer change this layer's fill to a stroke make sure i have my uh, line of my stroke on the outside bring this stroke out just like so that's okay we'll say like 70 is good and then change the stroke into a path or a fill and then shift click shift click shift m click here and then get rid of this. I can delete it and then unlock this layer. Now this actual curve here matches with this curve. You can do the same thing on the outside here. I would realistically um, just, just, you know, because you want to make sure it's all perfectly fine. So I'm going to take that shape really quickly, drag it up, lock this layer, uh, change this into a fill or stro a stroke. And I believe I had it at 70 on the outside. And I'm going to change this object to expand appearance. Click here. Delete that there, and that way I can drag this down here, delete it, and there we go. Now they're the same width from each other and all that cool stuff, and there, as you can see, this is the Y console that I had for my example, but just, you know, um, I just did it a little bit, you know, differently, a little fast, but it still works. It looks really good, and realistically, if you want to actually combine shapes together, so if you want to say this shape right here, this shape right here, and this shape all want to be one solid shape, so you don't have to actually select multiple things, all you have to do, and this shape right here, or not this one, this is actually the circle on the outside. Don't need that. So this shape, this shape, this shape, this shape, and this shape. I want all together. That would have to keep selecting them one by one. So if you want to, all you have to do is go to the Pathfinder tool, and you can find that with the Windows Pathfinder. And then basically, the first one that it says right here, it says Unite. So of course, you can think if you click on it, while all those shapes are selected with your Shift tool. Um, as you can see, now it's all one shape that I have to select one by one kind of thing going on here. And there's that, right? So it's like 10 times better. I'm going to delete that. And this looks a lot better. So uh, there we go. So then you can say to yourself, I actually want to uh, make sure that this is all connected as well with the Y, right? Unite, just like so. Now this is one entire shape. And these are two other differently entire shapes. So what I can do now is click on this. I can say to myself, what color do I want the inside? Maybe I want like a nice blue, you know, whatever the blue I had before because it was really pretty. This one right there or something like that. And then for the outsides, I want to make it, I don't know, purple, pink, whatever, you know, kind of have fun with it. And of course, the cool thing about, of course, you know, using your logos or making your logos an inside illustrator is that your logos are full vectored. That way it's actually not pixels. So you can kind of shrink it as small as you want and then make it as big as, you, uh, as, big as you want. And it'll still be the exact same quality, the same exact resolution that you've been created it uh if you were to do it inside photoshop if you do that in photoshop rip your quality <laughs> but this is a vector so it's all good so there you go there's the y comps that i actually did now i kind of said i was gonna do the h but you know it's it's a really long tutorial like if you want me to do it do you actually want me to do it uh, i'm just gonna quickly fix this kind of stuff here and there we go the same exact shape or the same exact letter console that's basically right here right just a little more tighter a little more you know cleaner but same exact, literally the same exact concept. I'm just going to shrink that down to size. So you can see it there, right? I just spaced it a little differently, right? This has way more spacing. This is really, really skinny. But take your time on it, of course, stuff like that. You still want to take your time on it. And uh, yeah, there's that Y concept. Now, I said I was going to do the H, bro. It's not that hard. Why not? Really quickly, okay? So, of course, I'm going to start off again with um, the whole shape thing, right? So I'll make a shape on the outsides. And I'm going to start off with that H. So... Basically, I'm going to start off with just doing this, okay? Boom. Boom. Right? Shape Builder Tool. There's our H, right? That's literally what I started off with for this right here. Now, what I'm going to do next is... 
let's just say we take this right here, rotate this like this, have that on the outside here, take this tool, duplicate with holding alt, reflect it. I'm going a little fast because you know exactly what I did already uh, because of the actual, uh, the other concept that I did, I want to make this a little more tighter. There we go. And I want to have these go down like this. I know this is not the exact same, you know, you want to make sure you line that up perfectly, but I want to, you know, keep it really quickly and just how fast you can actually manipulate this. So, um, the example here. Okay, so we need a AO, all right, we need a, a circle. So we're going to take a circle, L for our actual quick little sh shortcut for the circle. And there we go, something like that. Now let's make this a path. And we're going to put on the inside, we're going to put it to like, I don't know, holding shift again. These are totally not the same and it's blowing my mind. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take both of these and just drag it down just a little bit, just so it's even with the actual outside there. Okay, that's fine. Also, this messed up and this needs to be there. Cool, is that not the same anymore? Nope, it definitely is not. I think I moved this entire thing. There we go, perfect. All right, cool. Now, that's basically exactly the same thing I had for there. So what I can do now is I can just say to myself, you know, click on the outside, the circle here. Also, quickly make this to an actual fill. Click here, here, and here. Take the outsides and get rid of them. There we go. Now it's just one little thing right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, of course, like I said before, duplicate this. Make a nice smaller rectangle or smaller shape, smaller width. There we go. That's pretty much my, that's kind of like my uh, way of uh, making sure that you don't really get confused with, um, you know, the main letter concept and then just like something to go around it. So right now I'm going to go to here, right? I'm kind of fixing what my actual uh, circle is going to be manipulated to. Something like that, right? Also this one, I'm just going to duplicate this and reflect it horizontal. So as you can see, I'm just basically making... Uh, sure, that's on point. Basically making a uh, kind of a shape right here, right? The reason for this is I'm gonna move this out just a little bit. I'll say pretty, it's really good here, I think. I'm gonna unite these, so this is one entire shape. So I just wanna make my shape, and this is gonna be like my cutout shape. Like think like stencils in a way. So what I can do here, select this shape, select the circle on the outside, shift M, and then pretty much delete. And I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly make sure I delete the outsides as well. This outside, this outside, and then they get something like this. And I can do the same exact thing by either just taking this, uh, I, just, I made a duplicate of it just in case because I knew I was going to use it again, reflect it vertically. And of course, I don't actually know the exact width on the outside over here, but let's just say you can cut it out, kind of guess the width or, you know, make sure you have the same exact width. Or what you can do is shift click on everything, unite this. So that is one entire, one entire like circle. You already know this is still the middle of the actual circle. And when we have one side, a different side than the other. So I want to make sure this side is matched with this side. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just uh, kind of make sure that this is all. Let me just make sure this is all one shape as well. So this entire one shape, I'm going to lock this down. That way I can't actually select it, right? I can only select the actual circle here. So I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rectangle tool again. I'm going to figure out where half is. I'm going to make a new layer because you have to make a new layer when you want to use rulers which are located right over uh, guidelines. Are they called guidelines? Control R works, right? Pretty much control R. And I'm going to figure out where the middle is. So I believe it's like right there. So click. And there we go. So yes, uh, it depends on what layer you selected. So I put it on, I believe, which layer did I put it on? Oh, no. Right here. Guide right here. So this is the one layer that actually has that ruler on it. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my, uh, my, uh, where is that? Boom my rectangle tool will make sure this follows the exact path line and so basically what i do now is i can get rid of this ruler i don't need it anymore i'm gonna sh click on this little ruler uh excuse me this uh rectangle that's half of this circle right here shift m shape builder tool right click here delete this delete this delete this and then pretty much alt drag it over right click transform reflect vertical and then put this thing together right here. Make sure it's on the point. Select these two different uh, shapes here. Unite them. And now it's one entire shape, perfectly horizontal or perfectly uh, symmetrical with everything. 
And then pretty much all that's really next is kind of like, you know, figuring out the top part. How I did that was pretty simple. All I did was do something like here. I'll find that middle again. We're using the guideline here. Put it on that middle. Right click, transform, vertical. Bring that over here. Put it on the same point. Control or shift click on these, unite them. And then select the outside here. And then delete that, delete this, delete that. And there we go. Now we got the little cool little top part there. And what I did for here is what I did is I'm gonna unlock this really quickly. I don't need this anymore, but I'll just keep it hidden. Shift click on both of these two different uh, obvious shapes. Then I can click here, of course, with my plus button for the shape builder tool, right? I clicked right here, made it one uh, single shape. I'm just gonna make this smaller with uh, Alt and then holding Shift and then uh, holding Alt as well, or excuse me, Control, bring up the actual free transform box. Holding Shift, make sure it's I don't change the actual proportions. And then holding Alt keeps in the same orientation and that way I can do that. And what I can do then is take this shape here, drag this down. I made a duplicate of it by holding Alt while dragging it. And then you know, shrinking this down just a little bit more. Something went wrong here. It's not completely symmetrical, but I would fix it if I knew where to fix it, but that's perfectly fine for now. Um, Yeah, pretty much that's the exact same way I made the actual H concept. So there we go, I'm gonna lock, or I won't lock this. I'll get rid of this actual guideline though. Get rid of that guideline, and I'll bring up the actual example that I have here as well, and this example here. And then pretty much, as you can see, this is pretty much the same exact concept that I had for this, right? And I just changed this, shift click on these, combine them change this color to that right there, right? So there you guys go. As you can see, I know it was like a long tour. I know there was a lot in it, but I know it would help you so much. I wanted to at least show you guys the way I actually created these really cool shapes for the outsides of the actual concept. Now, um, when it like, like literally, you still have to sort of think in a way, but I really started off with something really simple. Like this is my really simple H. What if you had something that was a little cooler than this, or maybe you had more uh, parts to kind of edit for the, your surroundings? That's what you still got to think. Of course, you don't have to really try as hard now, if that makes any sense, or, or challenge yourself or really get frustrated because you can also work around the outside with your logo design to create something very, very simple, very awesome, very original, and you won't get a headache in like, well, you probably will still get a headache, but it won't be as bad as your other, you know, really trying to focus on your actual only the letter. But that's what I want to show you guys for you today. Um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to make sure you guys leave a like on the video. Of course, if you like the logo design tutorials, I know you guys already do. I already know you guys are going to kill it. And I know you guys are going to enjoy your day, right? You guys are going to enjoy your day. It's a sad, it's a Friday. You're, if you're watching this on day, it's uploaded. It's a Friday. So hopefully, guys, like I said, please leave a like. Uh, please follow me on Twitter, at SysWayQ. Please subscribe if you guys have yet already. Uh, please check out all the other tutorials that I have, uh, of course, on my channel. And, of course, check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash SysWayQ for any pre and packs as well as three bucks, which is a freaking awesome brush pack, everything pack being one of my two uh, most purchased ones, over 600 for one of them. One of them, or over 700 people have purchased it already. So it's something really awesome. And something for you guys to maybe like think about if you guys want to go ahead and purchase them you guys could and uh yeah all links are in the description down below please let me know in the comment section what you guys want uh what other tutorials want to see me do and i know this was long i need i really need to stop talking but like you know just making sure you guys understand that it's it's always not about the logo letter itself it can also be about what is surrounding it okay that's my little end quote there and i'm gonna see you guys later so switch so hq out peace keep smiling stay positive and stay productive Later.